Hello, in today's video I'm going to go over how to use WebEx. For those of you that don't know, WebEx is a virtual meeting tool that our university supports and offers in order to hold virtual class sessions and virtual meetings. To access WebEx, click on your address bar and type in sacredheart.webex.com. Once you're on this page, you're going to click log in on the upper right hand corner. On this page you're going to enter your username and your password. Please note that these credentials are not always the same as your Sacred Heart credentials. After you're logged in, you'll be given an option to create a meeting by clicking Meeting Center and then click on Enter Room. By clicking on Enter Room, you are going to access your personal meeting room, meaning there are no time constraints or anything of that sort. When you see this screen, you will know that your meeting has started. And in order to add people to your meeting, you're going to click on this button that says Invite and Remind. Under Invitees, you can simply enter your invitee's email address, or you can provide them with the meeting number that is located right here. Once your participants have entered the room, you'll be able to see them on the participant list right over here. Obviously, since this is a demo, it is only me, myself, and I in this room. But like I said, normally a list of people would appear below. The first option you'll see is this button right here that says Record. This button allows you to record your meeting. Once you record a meeting, it will be saved and you'll be able to access it again in your WebEx portal under the section that says My Recorded Meetings. The next option says Lock Room, which means that the room is only accessible to those you have invited. And the option next to that is Leave Room, but we'll save that for later. Moving down, you'll see a button that looks like a telephone. This button is your audio options. If you click that button, you'll be connecting to audio, and you'll be able to use your microphone to speak to your participants. If you click the More option beneath it, you'll be given further options, meaning you can call in via telephone rather than using your computer mic. We're going to skip the share screen option for now. I'm going to go back to that in a moment. And we're going to go over to the participants window once again. Like I stated before, everyone that's in your meeting will appear on this side. If you look to the right, you'll be able to see a video camera. If you click that, your webcam will be activated and your participants will be able to see you via webcam. If you look to the left, you'll notice that there's a ball next to my name. If you see this ball next to your name, you are the host. You can pass these host privileges to whomever you'd like by clicking on the ball and dragging it onto another name on the list. If you look above, you'll see a button labeled Chat. If you click on Chat, the chat window for the meeting will be opened. This is a text chat, meaning that it doesn't interrupt whomever is speaking. So if you have a question, it's a nice way to sort of subtly ask it without interrupting. Now, in this chat window, you have the option to send it to everyone. So I typed a message that says, from training support to everyone, meaning that everyone in my meeting can see it. However, if you wish to send someone a private message, you can click on this arrow right here, and you normally would see a list of names. You would select the person whom you wish to send a message to, and their name should appear right next to send to. And you would send a message by typing in the box and pressing enter on your keyboard. Now, if you were sending a private message, it would say from training support to, and the name whomever you wish to send it to would appear right where it says everyone. Looking back up at the top of the screen, you'll notice a button that says recorder. This is another place you'd be able to record your meeting from. It's the same option as the one noted earlier, 
the buttons pictured here, but it's just another way to access it. To write of that, you have notes. Notes are exactly what it sounds like, meeting notes. So if you're a student in a virtual classroom, you can type lecture notes there as your professor speaks, or if you're in a meeting, you can type your meeting notes there. And once you've typed your notes, you can click Save in the bottom right, and you can save these notes to your computer. Now, if you look at this Share Screen option, you'll be able to share your screen with your participants. To do that, we'll click on it, and you'll notice that the window disappeared, and instead has been replaced with this green box. If you hover over the green box, the menu will appear, and all the options from that pop-up window we had up earlier will be able to be accessed. In addition to all the meetings, you also have the option to annotate, meaning that if you're showing the screen and you wish to circle something, you can click on it and you can circle your text. If you click this arrow, you get more options. You can access your notes. You can stop screen sharing from here or you can click this button right here that says stop sharing. When you click that button, your familiar window will pop right back up and you can continue the meeting as normal. If you look in the upper right hand corner, you'll notice something that says new whiteboard. If you click on new whiteboard, you'll notice a blank white screen will appear. You can type in notes. You can draw. You can draw lines and sort of illustrate concepts to your participants. You can also allow your participants to annotate on the whiteboard as well by simply clicking on this ball that I mentioned earlier and dropping it in front of the name of the person you wish to allow to share. When you are finished, you can either click on Quick Start to get back that menu, and you can always toggle back and forth to your whiteboard, or you can close it out by clicking the X on the upper right-hand corner of the tab. When you click this, you'll get a warning that says, Closing this tab will remove its content from participants' viewers. It's making sure that you really meant to close this window. I'm going to click yes, and then you'll get a window asking if you'd like to save it. You can also save this onto your computer, just like you saved the notes, but since this is a tutorial, I'm going to just click no. Now I'm going to click quick start to get this panel back. And that is pretty much all there is to WebEx. I hope you enjoyed watching, and thanks for viewing.